Hey, what's up everyone? Julian here, back with another web development video. And today we're gonna to be uploading large files to the server and building a progress bar, along with displaying the percentage of how much of the file has been uploaded. Now, if you've ever tried to upload a large file using a form, uh, you'll know that once you hit that submit button, you could be sat there for quite some time just doing nothing. The browser isn't doing anything. You're not getting any kind of feedback, which isn't great, you know, as a user on an app, you want to be able to see how long you've got left to go for your file to be uploaded. So we need to provide some kind of visual feedback. So let me show you the example of what we're gonna be building. So this is our HTML page. So you can see very, very simple. We've got a file browser where we can select a file and this is a video and we get this bar. We get the percentage uploaded and we also get a nice little alert at the end. I think this video is a little longer so there we go, you can see if you do have large files, I think that one's about two and a half gigabytes. So you can see we're getting some nice visual feedback here and we know exactly how much has been updated. We can also cancel the upload and that's just gonna abort the request. If we try and upload a file without selecting one, we get this message. So it's quite relatively simple, but I think it gets the job done and, uh, and it looks all right. So we're gonna be using Bootstrap because it just lets us get the job done quicker. But of course, feel free to use any kind of CSS you want, write your own, don't use any CSS, whatever. It really doesn't matter, but we're gonna be using Bootstrap. So maybe the first thing I wanna say is I'm not a JavaScript expert. And um, so I'm sure there are many other ways of doing what we're gonna do now. There's probably libraries out there that help us do it but it's just something that I wrote and it works, it gets the job done and uh, and yeah, it's just what we're gonna use. So I would love to get your feedback throughout this. So comments below if you've got anything you want to uh, let me know. So let's go ahead and get started. Now we are gonna be using um, Python and Flask as our web framework, but really we're not actually gonna be doing anything with a file on the server. We're just gonna be printing out some information about it in our terminal. So. Uh, you know, this isn't just for Python, you know, if you've got, uh, if you're using Node or if you're using Go, any kind of web server, you know, this is going to work with. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's leave our uh, HTML for now and head over to our Flask app. So the first thing, let's, uh, let's recreate the route. So we're going to do, uh, first of all, actually, we need to import some things from Flask. So from Flask, import uh, render template request jsonify and make response now let's create our root i'm going to call it upload video but you can call it whatever you like and we need to provide the methods so we've got get and post let's write our function so We'll call it upload video again. For now, let's just return our template. And mine is in public. Upload video.html. So let's just make sure our template's loading. Cool. So all we're going to do on the server is just get a reference to the file and print it out. Also, I'm gonna grab a cookie as well, which I'll explain more about later. So file size is gonna be our cookie. And I want the file itself, so request.files, and then we give it the name. So we're just gonna call it as file. Let's print the file size, so we use an F string. and then we'll go ahead and just print the file below it. Let's build our response. So make response, can pass it, JSONify, and then just a simple dictionary message, and then the value, just an F string with the file name. 
Okay, so let's give that a 200 as well because that will be successful and return the response. Okay, so that's all we are doing in our um, in our server here, in our Flask app. So not much, we're just getting some, getting a cookie, getting the file, printing some information and returning a very simple response. So let's make sure everything's still working. Cool, so let's head back to our HTML file. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and, well, select and delete everything because we're gonna start from scratch. So if you wanna use Bootstrap, head over to the Bootstrap homepage, get started, scroll down to the starter template and copy, drop that in. We'll change the title to upload video and I'll go ahead and just delete this H1. Delete those comments, they're annoying. Right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna wrap everything in a container, create a row and create a column. And now I want a div with a margin bottom of three and a margin top of three. And inside that div, I'm gonna have an H2 also with margin bottom of three. And I also, this is gonna be the only, the one and only thing that we style in this. God knows why, but I feel the urge to. Font weight is 300. So let's just take a quick peek. Did I not save it? Oh, didn't even put anything in there. <laughs> oh dear, it's been a long day. Upload video. <laughs> oh, good. Goodness. Goodness gracious, I cannot talk or type today, so please bear with me. You're gonna to have to be patient with me today. Formgroup.mb3. Okay, uh, it's gonna be a custom file wrapper and then we can create our input element inside. It's gonna be type is file, class is going to be custom file input. Helps if you actually add some quotation marks around it. Uh, the ID is gonna be file input and I want an on input handler. So we'll create a function here called input file name. And what this is gonna do is that when the file name changes for the input, it's just gonna update it in the actual uh, element itself. So I will show you that working in a sec. That'll be the first function we create. So label for file input. I want an ID of file, file input label, and we need to throw a bootstrap class on this of custom file label and select file. So let's see how this looks. Okay, looking good. So we've got our file browser, we can select file and the function that we wrote in there, this input file name is just gonna update this. So it's kind of like changing the placeholder. So that's all good. So the next thing we need to do, we've got three buttons that we're gonna add. We've got our submit button, we've got a loading button and we've got the cancel button. So let's go ahead and get these done. So. This is gonna be our submit button and I'm gonna add the onClick uh, event handler and we're gonna pass it a URL. And because we're using Flask and Ginger, we can just call request.url because we're sending it to the same URL as this template. So that's fine, but if you're not using Flask, then just pass in the URL of where you wanna post the data to. So also needs an ID upload btn will do and um, we've got to set a class on this so we will set btn btn dash primary and upload file check it out yeah looking good but i'm just going to put upload so the next button we need to add 
is going to be our loading button. So this will be class of btn btn dash primary, and we're going to set display to none. I'm going to give this an ID of loading btn type equals button and it's going to be disabled so inside we'll add a span which is going to be our actual little spinner so class for that is spinner dash border and then spinner dash border dash sm like so I made a typo there spinner border spinner border dash sm Role is status and area hidden is true. And now below that we'll just add. Okay, so now if I take away this denon, we can quickly get a sneak peek of how that's going to look. Okay, looking good. And that's going to replace our upload button once it's clicked. Cool, so third and final button is going to be class of btn btn dash secondary. So this is going to be our cancel button. Can Told you I can't type today. I can't type well at the best of times. Cancel button, uh, we've got the class, we've got the ID and type of button and the text on that will just be cancel. So there we go. And we need to add Dean on to that as well. In fact, I'm just going to add cancel upload. Okay, so we've got our buttons, we've got our input. So the next thing we need is to create our actual progress bar. So what I'm going to do is create an, a div with an ID of progress wrapper and I'm going to set that to D9 as well. And then inside here, we're going to have a label, which is going to be our status. So ID equals progress status. I'll put some text there for now, but we're going to remove it. And then, um, we need to actually create the progress bar itself. So this is of class progress. I'm also going to add a bit of bottom margin on there. And then we need to create another div and I'm going to give this the ID of progress just to confuse you a little bit. So div with an ID of progress, the class is going to be progress dash bar. The role is going to be progress bar, all one word, the area dash value now is going to be 25, the area value min is going to be 0 and the area value max is going to be 100. Okay, I think we're looking good, so let me go ahead and chop out that denon so we can get a quick sneak peek. Okay, looking good. So let's go ahead and throw denon back in. Now we're almost there with the HTML. We got one more element that we need to add. And that's going to be the wrapper for the alert. So I'm just going to create a div with uh, alert wrapper. Okay, so I think um, in fact, I want to place that below. Let me just format this quickly, and that's going to go below here. Right click, format document. Whoops, close the file. That wasn't clever. Okay, so that is everything for our HTML. We head back. Okay, looking good. So let's jump into our JavaScript. Like I said, I'm not a JavaScript expert, so I'm sure there are better ways of doing this, and I would love to know, so feel free to drop them in the comments below. 
So the first thing I want to do is get all of our references to the elements in our HTML. So we'll do that with var progress equals document dot get element by ID and then we supply the ID. So we want the progress element. So we've got three elements to do with our progress. We've got the wrapper and we've got the status. So I'm just going to keep everything the same variable name as the IDs. It just makes life a lot easier. Next thing, we've got all our buttons. So let's go ahead and upload BTN. We've also got our um, loading button and we've got our cancel button. Next elements is our alert wrapper. Go ahead, copy that across. And then we got two more. We've got our actual input itself and we call that file input, come down, paste, and we've got our file input label, which is going to be our placeholder. So there we go. We've got all of the elements that we need here stored as variables. So the first thing I want to do, create a function, I'm going to call it show alert. And this is going to trigger the alert, the little uh, alert dialog below the buttons. So that's going to take a message and a an alert. Next thing I want to do is when this fu when this uh, function is triggered is update the HTML in the alert wrapper. So the alert wrapper is just an empty div. So alert wrapper dot inner HTML is equal to. And we're going to use backticks. And I'm going to come over to Bootstrap, head to Components, Alerts. And I want this one here because it's got the dismissible button on it. So I'll just copy that, paste that in. And then where we've got this alert warning, so this is the actual class that's going to give it the color. I'm just going to replace that with alert like so and then in here we'll just go ahead and create another span and then throw the message inside cool so there we go we've got our shoe alert <laughs> Okay, so we've got our alert function here, which we can call throughout our script. The next function I want to create is to update the name of the file on the actual uh, input element itself. So let's go ahead and function, I'm gonna call it input file name. It's not gonna take any arguments. So we'll get a reference to our file input label, change the inner text to the input dot files. So this is what we use to actually reference the file that we've um, selected in the input dot name, just like that. And we're using zero here because we're getting the first element. And in fact, there will only be one element in there. So let's just keep that like that, that's fine. Okay, so we've got our input file name and that's gonna trigger on this on input handler. So if we head back, this should work. So now, there we go, we can see we've got a file name in our, like a placeholder here. So that's worked as we wanted. So the next function we're gonna write is going to be our, is gonna actually create the request and handle all of the, um, the callbacks. So let's go ahead and build that function. And we called it upload and that's gonna be triggered on this uh, on this button click. So let's come down here and function upload, and that just takes a URL. If 
function. Helps if you spell it right. Okay, right, let's get started. So, what I want is if we don't have a value in the input, I want to raise that alert. So, if not input.value, then we'll go ahead and call our show alert function and no file selected as our message. And for the class itself, it's going to be just a warning. That's fine. Um, and then if they haven't selected a file, we're just going to return nothing. So that's just going to kill this function. So let me make a bit more space here, actually. I don't like this being all cramped up. OK, so let's power on through. Um, so assuming that we do have a file in our input, let's go ahead and actually create our new form data instance. So var data equals new form data. Then we can actually start to create our request. So we can do var, we'll call it request equals new XML HTTP request. So there we go, we've got our request object. So let's go ahead and just do a few bits of uh, cleanup to the HTML. We've got a few elements that we wanna hide, so let's just go ahead and do that now. We also need to set the request response type, and we're returning some JSON, so go ahead and set the uh, response type there. So let's, uh, let's power on through and if we've got any alerts, I want to go ahead and clear them. So inner HTML, I'm just going to set that equal to nothing. So that will get rid of any existing alerts on the page. Uh, I also want to disable the input. So input disabled equals true. Um, okay, uh, we want to hide the upload button. Upload button dot class list dot add d none. We want to reveal the loading button. So loading button dot class list dot remove d none. And we also want to reveal our cancel button. So cancel button dot class list dot remove oops denon okay next thing we want to do is also reveal our uh, progress bar so that's all wrapped up in the progress wrapper so we'll do again remove denon and that's about it for uh, removing the denon classes. So next thing we want to do is actually start building our request. So let's get a reference to the file itself. So that will be input dot files zero because we want the first element. And this isn't going to be for posting multiple files, just a single file. So let's get the file name. File name equals file dot name like so and I also want the file size so var file size is going to be file dot size which is quite nice let's go ahead and set that cookie that I was talking about so document dot uh, cookies dot cookie sorry uh, file size equals, uh, we need to use backticks here because we're going to do a bit of interpolation and we'll just go ahead and dump the file size in there. Okay, so far looking all right. Next thing I want to do is data, which is our form data here. We're going to append to it the file and we're going to give it the name of file and that's also going to take our file so created the uh, well we've appended the uh, file to the data object 
And now what we need to do is actually start creating our callbacks for this, uh, this request. So the uh, XML HTTP request comes with different uh, event listeners where you can attach functions to. So depending on what's happening throughout the request, you can trigger different events throughout the, uh, throughout the JavaScript. So we'll go ahead and get started with those. So the first one we're going to do is request.upload.add event listener. And we're going to be listening for the progress and then supply a function which takes the event now in the progress handler we want to be updating the progress bar and we want to be updating the percentage so let's go ahead and do that so we'll create a new var variable called loaded which is going to be e dot loaded we'll create a variable called total which will be e dot total so that's going to be the total file size of what we're uh, uploading to the server now we need to calculate a percentage so var percentage complete is going to equal to loaded divided by total multiplied by 100 just like that and that's going to give us a percentage so the next thing I want to do is um, update our progress bar and the percentage uh, count. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got our progress bar and we need to set an attribute to be able to do this. And the attribute is the style attribute and the value we're going to set to it, we need to use backticks again here, is width colon space and then we're going to use the dollar sign curly braces to insert some JavaScript. And we're going to do math.floor. And then into that, we're just going to pass our percentage complete. And we also need a percent symbol at the end there. So that's going to calculate the percentage. And then it's going to round it down and then set the attribute of the progress bar and that's going to update. So every time there's any kind of progress in the request, it's going to trigger this callback. It's going to compute the percent and then update the progress bar. Now the next thing we need to update is the label that we've got on there with the percentage. So what do we call that? Progress status dot inner text is also going to be equal to and we'll take the back ticks and I'm just going to go ahead and copy this math.floor percent um, and then we'll just put uploaded like that. Okay, so update the progress bar and update the text. Cool. So I just want to do something quickly so we don't have any mistakes here. I'm just going to put that there so we don't accidentally do something stupid with these curly braces. Right, next thing we want to do is add the another event listener on our request. So this is going to be add event listener for the load uh, callback function, take an event. So this is going to be once the uh, request is finished. So what I want to do if the request dot status is equal to 200 so if everything went well what do I want to do I want to show an alert I want to pass it the uh, message from the response so we can do that with uh, what am I doing here All right, I had an absolute mind bank that's going to be the request dot response dot message and then we're going to pass success just like so else what do we want to do well I also want to show an alert so I'm just going to copy that 
and paste that in and in here we're going to just say error uploading file and we'll throw in danger so there we go and after this uh, if else block I'm going to call reset and that's another function that we're going to have to write. So we're going to write a function called reset, which is going to just reset everything on the page back to its kind of initial state. So next function is going to be another event listener on the uh, request. So request dot add event listener, and this is going to be listening for errors function, pass in the event. And in here, we're just going to do the following. I'm going to call reset. And again, we're going to write that function in a sec. And then we will show alert and then pass into that um, just error uploading file and danger. So that will throw a red, red alert. Now, we can actually send our request now. So request dot open and to that I'm going to pass the post and the URL and then we can actually go ahead and send it with request.send and pass in our data object. Cool, so the last thing I want to add in this function is a uh, is an event listener for when we want to cancel the upload. So we know we've got a cancel button, so we'll go ahead and add an event listener to that. And we want to listen for a click and then provide a function. And we're just going to call request dot abort, like so. So when someone clicks the uh, cancel button, it's going to abort the request. Okay, so that is our upload function. Now we've just got to write one more and then we are done. So we're nearly there, I promise. I know this is probably taking a lot longer than expected, but that's the way it is. So function reset, not gonna take any arguments. So the first thing we wanna do is input.value. I'm gonna go ahead and set that to null. Next thing we're going to do is hide some of our buttons. So we've got our cancel button, um, class list dot add d none. Uh, we've also got our loading button, class list dot add d none. And we've also got our upload button, which we want to display. Class list dot remove D none. Okay, um, we also want to make sure, actually I'll do that up here. So input dot disabled equals false as well, because we don't want the input disabled. Okay, uh, we also want to remove any progress uh, indicators that we've got on the page. So we can do that with the progress wrapper dot class list dot add D none. And we can reset the progress bar as well. So that was called progress and uh, no, not add, we want to set the attribute of style and we're going to give that the value of width uh, 0% so that's just going to reset the, um, the progress bar and the final thing we want to do in here is just reset the um, label for the input so the placeholder is just going to say select file again so we've got that as file input label in a text equals select file okay so I think we are good to give this a test okay so let's save this and head back to our browser 
So let me just open up, we'll make some space for the terminal here so we can see what's going on. Clear that, Flask will run. So let's come back to the browser, refresh, and let's try it. So let's grab a file, go ahead and open, hit upload. Okay, we're not getting the, um, let's try that again. Why are we not getting, hmm, what have I missed? Sorry guys, I must have missed something here, so bear with me and uh, let me check. Okay, I think that should be it. I think we just weren't um, removing the denon from the, uh, there we go, from the wrapper there. So we're up and running. Let's try again, let's try using the cancel. Hmm. Oh, we didn't even create the um the abort event listener. That will be why. So I'm just gonna copy this, paste that down, abort. Let me just format this. Okay, so uh Upload cancelled and we'll pass in the primary here. Okay, I think that was it. I think. Let's check it out. Upload, cancel. Okay, good. And let's let one run through. Okay, looking good. So we're getting our file size cookie here and we're also getting the file itself being printed. And if we try and upload with nothing selected, Beautiful. Okay, so I think this is the long one here. Go ahead and open. So there we go, guys. That's uh, that's what I wanted to show you. And if we look down here in storage, we can see we've got our cookie, which has been set, file size with a value there. So that pretty much covers it for this one. I know I had a few silly little mistakes here, but uh, you can even make mistakes when you're copying your own code. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. And uh, like I said, if you do have any comments on this or any ways to improve it, I would love to hear. Um, send me a link to a GitHub gist or, you know, send me a link to some code somewhere where I can have a look. If you've got an example of this, I would love to see it. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found it useful and feel free to subscribe. Uh, I've got plenty more videos coming soon and as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.